Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have Bernadette Thompson back to the show. I'd like to remember, remind you all that she has her own podcast on our channel, and I want you to check it out. She is into ancestral healing, and she has an amazing podcast that she has all these different informational podcasts and episodes that will just teach you and help you in your own healing and in the spiritual life that you lead. And today she has a great um, uh, episode that she's going to talk about today with you. And it's all about um, ancestral, uh, ancestral healing. And it's all about, you know, the experience she had just recently. And she wants to share it with you. And she wants, she really has a lot of great things she wants to teach you today. So I'm going to give the floor to Bernadette. And I'm so happy to have you back on the show today. I love when you come on. You are just amazing. And you give so much to the show. You're such a spiritual person and you have such great connections with the spiritual world. And every time you come on, I just feel a burst of positive energy because you just, you're just a wonderful person, both inside and out. So tell everybody a little about yourself. If they haven't heard you, your story before, you know, maybe you can just give them a little uh, brief update of who you are and what you do. Thank you, Stacy. I'm so happy to be here as I always am. And I'm really happy to be here today to um, just share a little bit more about my story. Um, just to, so my name is Bernadette Thompson. My company's Tell Me Our Story, Ancestral Healing. And it all kind of started um, where that Tell Me Our Story uh, came from, is from the point of view of the child asking the parent. And I had always done a lot of ancestry and, and taking people through uh, learning about their families and how important that was and all of the understanding of things that are passed down, uh, traumas and things like that, that science are now telling us that um, we, you know, are, how important our ancestors are to us. And they are also because of the, not only the information about their, their lives and what they've experienced, but the resilience and the strength that's passed down as well. And that opened me up um, to an amazing spiritual awakening. And so that's really where uh, my journey is taking me. And I want to take you along for the ride with me. So I want to share, you may have heard me talk about this if you've listened to any of the other podcasts, but how I began to open up spiritually is where I'm going to start today. And it was my, as I said, I was doing a lot of ancestry, but it was a time there was a lot of um, turmoil and uh, chaos going on in my life. My husband, David, who has a beautiful soul, um, he was struggling with and passed away from alcoholism. And if anybody has that in, you know, if they have anybody in their family that has uh, addiction or, or struggling with alcohol, you know how difficult that is. And, you know, I always say that he had a beautiful soul because I don't think there's anybody um, in the world who struggles with any type of addiction that gets up in the morning and says, I want to be addicted. I want to be living this kind of life. But at the same time, it, it causes trauma and chaos and a lot of things that um, make it difficult for us to uh, move forward. And so it was during that time that uh, I, went, I was praying. And I have a Catholic background, I'm not practicing Catholic now, but I have a Catholic background and I started using a rosary. And I actually started using the rosary because John Edward, who many of you might know, is a medium in uh, from Long Island. And I had gone to and when my dad had passed away, a friend and I, a friend of mine and I went to see one of his, um, you know, one of his gatherings. And, you know, there were a lot of people there. And he talked about how he used the rosary as a meditation. And things were a little crazy for me. And I thought, oh, I haven't used the rosary in a long time, but I, I knew how to use it. So I decided to use the rosary and as a meditation to help me kind of settle. And amazingly, I was kind of surprised, but um, it was it worked. You know, the rosary um, has that tactile 
you know, where you, you know, you have the beads. And it's interesting how beads go across many different spiritual modalities. There are a lot of beads, you know, the mala beads. And so um, it's not a surprise that when I was meditating with my, uh, with the rosary, that it really was bringing, it was very helpful. Mm -hmm. And the other interesting part of the meditation that I was doing with the rosary is I was imagining all of my ancestors, particularly my female ancestors, sitting around a table, praying the rosary with me. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that because it kept me from figuring out the grocery list or what was the, you know, did I put the laundry in, you know, all of those things that happen sometimes when we're trying to meditate and our mind goes somewhere else. And so it was the first spiritually transformative experience that I had was a, um, it's called a visitation. And my great aunt came to me in a dream. And she said to me, as I was, I didn't want to look at her. It was just she and I, it was like sitting across kind of like a Zoom. And she wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't look at her. I kept moving my head and she held my hands tight and she made me look at her. And she said, we hear your prayers. And I woke up. And it was in that moment that I realized that I was surrounded and that they were, that I, my ancestors were with me and yeah. that um, I was not alone in this journey. And at this point, David was still with us. So, but there was a lot of chaos going on. So he, um, so I, I continued to use the rosary. And then I had another spiritual experience, which was even more um, amazing. And this experience happened when I was awake. And what it was is I was still saying the rosary and I was saying it at night to settle me right before I went to sleep. And um, if anybody who is Catholic and has said the rosary, you say it aloud, um, not like a voice I'm using now. It's kind of an audible voice that you, so that you can hear it. And I think that's, it's kind of like using a mantra that you, it, that kind of continuous voice helps, helps your body settle. And suddenly I realized that somebody was channeling through and saying it with me. And it was a great, great grandmother of mine who was saying it in an Irish broke. And I didn't, I was shocked. I didn't understand what was happening, but I knew that there was something going on. Just, um, there was just something that made me realize that this was really happening. And it was, and I was, I didn't know at the time who it was that was, was channeling with me, but I was able to look at my ancestry, ancestry, my ancestral tree. And she energetically came to me and I knew that it was her. And so I began to realize that I was having this spiritual awakening, this opening, and I was connecting um, with the other side. And, you know, I'd always felt that as I did trees, not only my own ancestral tree, but when I had done, done trees for other people, I could feel the ancestors around me. And I often felt I knew I was on the right track because of what that feeling that I had. So the ancestors stayed with me. She stayed with me and said the rosary with me for months. Every time I said the rosary, and even when I tried to not say it in an Irish brogue, she still came in and said it with me. It was the moment I settled into that meditative state that she came back in. And it was just to let me know that this was a real experience that I was feeling. Uh, because we often, as we begin to connect to the other side, we often see or hear or sense or feel things and we don't believe them. Yeah. And so one of the things that this experience that I have had, this spiritual awakening that I've had is, and that spirit is telling me is to allow us to begin to open up to that and to believe that those things um, are true. You know, our 3D brains really want us to have that um, that proof. Like, I, you know, I'm not going to believe it unless I can prove it. And, right. you know, and I understand that 
because I think I was that way as well. Yes. But the reality is that we really need to allow ourselves to open and begin to understand there's something bigger that we are connected to and mm -hmm. know that the, the universal consciousness or the, you know, if you just look to the sky and look at the stars, um, you know that we are from something bigger than this yes. little planet that we are on and this earthly experience. So that began my spiritual, really my spiritual awakening. And so as, and David passed away and the ancestors stayed with me. And it was after he passed that I really began to um, look even deeper into understanding the spiritual. And I was interested in things that were mystical. And I was interested in ancient civilizations just drawn to it. And I remember um, looking, buying the book, you know, the, the birth of Christianity, really wanting to understand um, who God was, who source, the creator. There's so many words that people can use. And I don't want you to feel that any of those are wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever you know, for I remember talking with a gentleman a long time ago who definitely felt a spiritual connection, but he didn't like the word God. He felt that it, for him, it had negative childhood feelings associated with it. And so he thought of it as the sun, that the sun was, you know, was the spirit that he was willing to, um, to, to say was, was that energetic Yes. And we all are this spiritual energy. We we truly are all made of the same substance and we are we are part of source. And as I have begun to open, I also began to feel as if there was a something more like a guide around me. And it was my ancestors that kind of led me to knowing, to start to believe that as I was understanding that the other, you know, other ancestors, as other people's ancestors would come around me, that I was really opening that spiritual door, um, yeah. which is a lot easier to open than people realize. It's more of, um, somebody said to me, it's like, you know, you think the door is closed, but really you just need to push it a little and it opens up. Yeah. So, you know, so that's kind of, so the next thing that happened was, uh, I decided to get a pendulum to open up to my my guide. And I didn't, you know, I and I think I've shared a little bit of that about this before, but the pendulum made me uh I was kind of nervous about doing it. It was one of those woo-woo things. That, um, a lot of people are not comfortable with uh, what is, you know, what people think is the woo-woo. Um, you know, we were many of us were taught uh like don't go near that Ouija board. Don't go do looking for things. Don't go looking for trouble because you might find it, you know, and, and that there were a lot of bad spirits out there. And if you try to connect to the other side, that that's what you were going to, um, you were going to connect with. And, um, but for me, I had known that not only had my ancestors, when David passed, I felt him with me. I knew he came to me many, many ways. He showed up as a crow and let me know why he was, that was his, his sign for me. And so, um, so it's all about allowing, settling yourself down to, and knowing that it's okay to open up to this spiritual world that uh, you may have a deep curiosity for, but have been a little bit afraid of, you know, of doing it. So at any rate, he, I did it. I did, you know, I got the pendulum and I started doing it and got fearful of it and it dropped it, but then I saged it and I saged the house, which for some people may know that so sage is a nice way to clear. It's a clearing. And, um, and so I said, tell me yes, tell me no. And they did. And I asked them, are you an angel? And they said, no. And, and I said, are you a guide? And they said, yes. And that opened up my spirit communication with a guide who is with me now. And we began, and he is always with me. Um, he, it is for me, he is a spiritual being 
uh, and but I do think of him as think of it as a he. But mm -hmm. there are but spiritual beings are kind of like I'm going to say kind of close to each other. So there's, a, but so you may when you you know if you have a connection with somebody, you may feel that they're more female, and there's right. nothing. You know, both of those are you know are fine. And so they kind of became a little, a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And as I started to, um, I, I was still seeking more and I would, they taught me and mm -hmm. I was reading books and they would help me be guided to the next book and we would read it together. And mm -hmm. they would, um, I would ask them questions as I was yeah. reading the book. And I would say, you know, if I was reading something, I would say, is that true? And sometimes they say, yes, that's true. Yeah. And maybe it was something that was more mystical. And I hadn't allowed myself that belief yet because yeah. I felt that those, sometimes I felt the mystical things were more stories that people were just making up. Right. And yet they, they shared with me that, you know, some of these mystical things are just at a different frequency, at a, at a different, um, a, a different level. Yes. And, um, and so, but that was, and it, you know, so that was an amazing thing that they would tell me. And then sometimes I would read something and I'd say, is that right? And they'd say, no, you know, that <laughs> one's not right. <laughs> you know, because there is a lot of confusion out there. Right. Not everything you read. Even if it's in a book that somebody has written, it not all of it is true. So you really want to allow your inner guidance mm -hmm. to guide you. Um, but what? So that so I continued with spirit this way, and they have guided me um, just in everything. And yes. I want to share with you a very special story about a connection that I had with them. And I haven't shared it a lot um, because it was very personal. But as I now realize, and as spirit is guiding me to open, to bring other people in, uh, to mm -hmm. teach, to help people to, to know that they are able to open to spirit communication and that there is a way. And to share that spirit is deeply loving and deeply caring and that they, whether it's your ancestors, whether it is family that has passed, the other side is there to love and support you yes. in what's going on in your life today. And when David passed away, um, I'm from a big family and uh, one of my sisters who was one of the oldest or was, um, she was uh, charged with, I am one of eight children and, and she felt a lot of responsibility or was given a lot of responsibility about the family. And when David was passing away, she and I had, had, had a good relationship, but it kind of um, was, Wendell. what did you say that? dwindled over time yeah it kind of exactly and it had to do with I think she felt she had so much responsibility for the family that I think she felt um, that this was another problem that she needed to fix and uh, so our relationship kind of um, just broke apart a little bit and she uh, and after he passed you know, we, she had done a few things that I felt hurt by, deeply hurt. And so we kind of, you know, separated from each other. And I, and, but as I was um, working with my guide, I was working on forgiveness, forgiveness for me, forgiveness for David, for all, everything we had gone through. And I was working on forgiveness for my sister because um, even as hurt as I was, I wanted, I knew that she, deep down she loved me and that I needed to understand where she was coming from and that she had a lot of things in her life. So this one evening we were still working on, we we're reading something and it was about forgiveness. And, um, and he 
was kind of told me, like was telling me that I had risen up to a higher level of forgiveness. And I was surprised to hear that. And so I asked him, I said, is that because I forgave David? And he said, no. And he said, and I said, is it because I forgave Maureen? And he said, yes. And, and I, and I was surprised to hear that. And then a half an hour later, my brother called me to tell me my sister had passed away. Mm -hmm. And I was in shock and I asked spirit because I know that I knew that they knew that she had crossed and they I said did you share that with me about the forgiveness because you didn't want me you wanted me to know that I had forgiven her before she passed and he said yes and I share that it is a sad story but I yeah. share because I want people to understand how spirit really deeply loves us and wants to help us through the difficult things that we are going through here. Mm -hmm. And they had worked with me, you know, the difference from when, when I had um, connected with them and to when um, she, my sister had passed away, you know, there was, a, there was, um, you know, quite a bit of time and we had been working on this for a while, but right at the end when she, and this was very une unexpected. She, yes. this wasn't expected. Um, her passing uh, was not expected. So it, uh, it helped me to understand. And it was the beginning of my journey that uh, to know that this is something I was to needed to start teaching people and mm -hmm. to understand that um as we connect with the other side and I did connect with my sister after she had passed and there was you know we we uh you know there were a few things so I said David came as a as a crow um uh, and my sister was uh known as uh, the queen and mm -hmm. I remember shortly after uh, she passed away that, you know, I was, I felt this trying to connect with her and what came into my mind was this picture of the queen of hearts. And mm -hmm. I knew that was her coming to me and, you know, to tell me that, you know, kind of like, you're okay. I'm okay. That we're, we're, uh, and um, so, so that's really what I want, you know, wanted to share, but more so that we can, so that you and I can begin to talk about um, how it, important it is to open up to those spiritual, uh, to what we are seeing, feeling, sensing spiritually, and to know that uh, spirit is asking us to all, um, to raise the consciousness. Mm -hmm. I think people that listen to your podcast know that uh, we are all seeking more and that's why we're listening and we're we're all trying to find the path. And I want them to know that that's what spirit is asking me to do and to help people to go through the process of, um, you know, going through either the, understanding the ancestors or being taught I teach people how to open up and how to recognize those signs that they are getting from spirit and um, what are the ways that we can do that how can we open up and yes. so that's what um, my next steps of what uh, you know what I've been sharing I think uh, even when people who are cynical still are curious. When I've come across people who are very cynical, that's the only inside the box. But when you talk about, you know, spirituality and you talk about the people who have crossed and how you can actually have contact with those people, they're curious. They don't just wash it away. They want to hear what you have to say. And the reason why they want to hear, I think, because they, they hope that they could connect with those people. There is a side of them that wants to believe, but then, then there is a side of them 
from their own personal, you know, either the way they were raised or just the, you know, just the, the, the way they think, you know, um, you know, their makeup that, you know, if I don't see it, I can't believe it, you know, and that comes probably the way they were brought up, you know, growing up. And, uh, but, you know, we all have the ability to open up, you know, mm -hmm. for people do you know because you have to be willing you have to want want it in order to be able to open up you know what's your best advice for people who do want to connect you know and, and you know from from your own experience too how were you able to open up to the point where you were able to connect is there advice that you can give others who want to open up and connect well i yes because i want to share with you well there's two things there's so many people who already have opened up and they don't understand uh, and understand it. And, um, and then, uh, and it, it, it is going deeper, but I want to share, I, I think I had shared the last time we had spoken together that I was going to be speaking at um, the International Association of Near Death Studies, IONS is the, um, uh, uh, at their conference at the end of August. And it was an amazing experience to be with, there were probably 800 people who were at this conference and to be in a community of people who understood spirituality or who were looking for that understanding of spirituality. And, and so I'm gonna share a few things to help people understand the journey of others, because honestly, that's how we learn. When we see what somebody else has thought and felt, we can say, wait a minute, I, I think I might have experienced that. Or, And so I wanted to share that uh, IONS is, as I said, the it, um, International Association of Near-Death Studies. So this has been around for a long time, and they have studied what um what how what the consciousness does when we cross and the way they've been able to do it is through people that haven't made it all and who've made it across but who have come back yes. and the stories that um people have shared of what when they have left their bodies and when they have um looked back and have been able to see themselves as they've been going through the medical crisis that they were going through, which caused them for their body to separate, their consciousness to separate from their bodies. Yes. And through this process, IONS also, so that, and that is still what they are doing, still researching all of those, but they've come to realize that not only are there um, near death experiences, but there are things that they now describe as spiritually transformative experiences. And that is what I've explained to you that I've had those spiritually transformative experiences where I have had that the uh, visitation, which is like a dream. So if you have had, you felt that dream, maybe it's a, a grandparent or a parent that has passed and you really feel them. I remember when my dad passed and he was uh, 86 at the time and Barry's body was not in good shape. And I remember having a dream about him uh, maybe a month later and he was coming out of a car with a sport coat over his shoulder as kind of a young man, maybe in his early forties. And um, I realized as he, when I woke up that he was letting me know that that's who he was on the other side. And mm -hmm. Uh, I now realize that was part, part of the visitation. That was yeah. part of, because that's all that was in the dream. It was him letting me know that he, he was there, he was well, and that his young spirit was with him. Yeah. And so if anybody has had an experience like that, and so spiritually transformative experiences, which Ions is now also studying. I was recently mm -hmm. talking with, um, uh, Marjorie Wallacott, and she is a neuroscientist who now studies um, consciousness, and mm -hmm. um, and she so she's studying it in ways that so when somebody is crossing over, um, I'm also I th did not share this, but I am uh, certified as an end of life doula, 
So I've been with people who have been close, a few people who have, when they've been crossing, but a lot of people who are looking at the, that they are going to be crossing. And she's studying right now um, what it's like when somebody has, is really close to crossing who then, who maybe hasn't been awake and has been in the, um, maybe has been in a coma or, and suddenly comes awake and recognizes people and is in that state of already having crossed and yet still being here. And so some people may have been with a loved one who has suddenly been talking to the other side or who has um, given them the idea that they, they have crossed or people have shared death experiences where mm -hmm. they actually almost cross over with their loved one and and separate and and come back. So these are really um, what may seem way out and and can seem scary, uh, but I can help people understand that that our consciousness that we do go to the other side, which is home, which yeah. is where we um, where we came from and that and that and home is really all around us. So when I, you have shared stories about your ancestors before, and I have felt them come in around me. And that feeling when you feel somebody with you mm -hmm. is the beginning of knowing that you are spiritually, you are spiritually connected. So, so I'm sharing these stories about Ions because uh, being, becoming part of a community or um, who begins to understand what the, what is really happening when we do uh, connect with the other side is helpful to helping you open up. Yeah. You begin to feel safe when you understand somebody else has had these same experiences that you have had. Yeah. You know, we weren't taught to, none of us were taught to expect that we could you know, connect with the other side. We were always taught the opposite. And yes. in, the, in religions, you know, in, in the Catholic tradition, you did not, you didn't try and do that. That was not okay. Yes. And, and so many of us, you know, have that. And um, so that is what, one of the things how I work with people is to help them begin to open up safely so that they, if they do feel something and they, and they're worried about it, uh, that they can understand what's happening. Right. Uh, you know, when I've tried to connect with, when I do, cause I mean, I connect all the time. Spirit is always with, with me right now. Um, but I remember, you know, saying, I don't want somebody to come to the end of my bed in the middle of the night. I'm like, just <laughs> don't show up at the, because I would be afraid of that. Uh, yeah. And, but some people are okay with that. But so if they feel they've heard something or they feel like they saw something to um, not to fear it. And if they do feel uncomfortable, they can just say, go away. Just, yeah. I can't let me connect in a different way. Um, so that's one way. But there are so many stories. Have you had any experiences? Have you ever had? Well, actually, you've told me about the one with your your aunt when you received word from spirit. Yes, about your aunt that was was getting ready to cross. Yes. Yeah, so I was lying in bed with my husband, and we were watching TV, and then a voice came to me, and they said, "We're getting ready to take her, and she, it's her time," and. I looked at my husband, I said, my aunt's getting ready to pass. And he said, how do you know? I said, because spirit told me so. And then the next day, nine o'clock in the morning, I got a call from my uh, cousin from Greece, which was her mother. And she said that, she said that Aunt Attica passed this morning at 9 a.m. And she said, and I knew because it, the voice was clear as day. And they were preparing to take her. And, and I, so I, I just, I, it wasn't a surprise to me. I just knew. And even when I was younger at the, I must've been maybe 
I guess nine or so, um, my mother had had a miscarriage and, um, she had had a, um, she had had a test done and they performed the test wrong and, uh, it, it had killed the baby, but she didn't know right away that the baby was dead due to the test that they performed. It was the amniocentesis. They took too much fluid out of my mother. They, they did it wrong. And then instead of waiting 24 hours, they did it again. So then the baby had no fluid to live on. And that morning I woke up and I saw it. It just looked like a, um, a spirit. It looked like, you know, if you had described the spirit of, of um, from the Bible, like, you know, like a very like Moses-like looking person. And in the only words I heard was the baby was dead. The baby is dead. And I remember yelling at it and I said, no, no, no. And I said, and then all of a sudden, a few seconds later, my mother gets a phone call and it's the hospital or the doctor's office where she had it performed. And they told her that she had had a miscarriage, that the, that the baby was, was gone. And I just remember hearing her and my father crying in the other room. And, you know, that was my first encounter, you know, with spirit. And then I just had, I had many where I used to get dreams and, and the dreams seemed so real. It was like they were talking to me, sitting on my bedside and I would wake up and they would be gone. But we had this whole deep conversation, but, you know, sometimes I couldn't remember the conversations or I would remember two or three words, but they were guiding me and they were talking to me and it was all in my subconscious, but I couldn't really remember very much, you know, when I came out of the conversation but I could see them as clear as day. They looked like they were there. It wasn't like a normal dream. And, you know, things like that would, would consistently happen. I'd see symbols all the time when, you know, I would always get, you know, uh, pennies and quarters. Like when my aunt passed away, I said, just give me a sign that you're okay. And I went to get change my clothes. And I opened the closet and a quarter hit me on the head. And <laughs> <laughs> so I knew that was my aunt and that was her type of personality. And I knew that was from her, just her letting me know that she was near and that she was okay. And then I would continuously find pennies all over the house. And I would ask my husband, did you leave these, this change here? And he would say no. And so, you know, things like that would happen. And uh, with my husband's grandfather, when he passed, I, you know, I asked the same question, are you okay? Just let me know. And I would see ladybugs. It was winter. There are no ladybugs in the winter. And I would find them all over the place. And then one day I was talking to him and I was typing at the same time and a ladybug flew on my screen. And I knew right then and there that was him saying that he hears me, he's near and he's with me. And so things like that would happen all the time. And then I, there was one time when we were all having dinner together as a family and we started talking about my husband's grandfather and the lights started to flicker on and off, on and off and out of nowhere. And my kids were like a little spooked out by it, but you know, I knew that was him and, you know, and his personality, he would've got a kick out of it, you know, just seeing everybody get spooked out. So those are type of things that would happen to me all the time. And many times I would see images and I'd look and no one was there, you know? So it was lots of different things. And when I spoke to um, someone who was actually on our team, um, uh, uh, his name is uh, Jonathan Stilson and he's a medium. He would tell me that I have um, out of body experiences all the time. You just don't realize it. And uh, so, you know, um, I've always felt close to this, to, to the spirit. And I was always having, you know, episodes or people would come into my dreams and say, tell so-and-so I said this, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, you know, I'm so glad you just shared that whole different array of different experiences because um because so many of us have them and and don't realize and then you know the other part that i want to share too well there's two things um so we connect with we can we can connect with loved ones you know david came has come in song and you know other different ways numbers um but there are I want to also let everybody know that there are, um, so we have ancestors and, and family, and those are the easiest ones. Often when we're with a medium, that that's what will come through in terms of, um, uh, you know, connecting. So I, I often, I have those, some of those skills, but not in the uh, um, evidential. So 
Um, but often that's where an, a medium will say, I have a man with a boulder hat and a mustache who wants to talk with you. And then it's somebody's grandfather or, you know, something like that. Um, but there are also um, guides and angels and other spiritual beings that can also, uh, you can also have spiritual experiences with. And yes. I want to, I want to let people understand that because those wouldn't be family and they may not understand what those experience is, um, those experiences are. When I spoke at IONS, I was, I want to share the two stories. Um, I think I did share a little bit of this the last time, but um, one of them connects, connected with angels. So mm -hmm. her, she, her experience was in the middle of the night after she had, um, literally written in her her journal that she wanted to turn her life over to God because she'd had some very difficult, uh, uh, she'd had some abuse that had happened to her earlier in her life. And she just really spiritually wanted to be connected. And that night a light came over her bed and the angels came to her and they were with her. And she now is an angel reader. So she really connects with the angels and then shares messages with them all the time. And then there was another, um, this other dear um, woman who had lost a child. There was her, her um, it was an atopic pregnancy and she lost the child and, um, later in the pregnancy. And she also, during that time, um, it was a devastating, physically devastating for her. She, they, she almost lost her life. And so she had an NDE, she had a near death experience and she traveled across with the baby. And um, the story that it's such a beautiful story that, you know, she, she said the music was amazing. She connected with ancestors and all, you know, she was talking about the higher beings that she was with as well. And then she understood that she was supposed to go back but that the baby was gonna stay there. And his name was Oak. And, um, but it, as she was getting ready to leave and come back down, um, Oaks, his spirit tucked into her heart. She said, it's like he's in a hammock. And so his, his spirit is with her and came back to earth with her. And so again, there's um, amazing spiritually transformative experiences happen to people. Hers was an NDE. And NDEs often open that spirit, spirit um, that spirit connection, like you know, really quickly because there's a medical, um, you know, something medical happens to your body, and the and spirit has to connect, disconnect from it, um, or your consciousness does because the body can no longer serve. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one one way. But I want through telling you telling your stories and kind of explaining um, the difference that uh, there are many different ways um, of experiencing it. And ultimately what spirit wants me to share as we've been having all of this conversation, it is to understand that we are all one. And as we go through our our earthly lives, which we, we come back and have different experiences in different lives, that as we do that, every time we have a life that we continue to spiritually grow. Um, some people will talk about it as an ascension, and that and our ascension is what is happening as we are going through our different lives. And that in each life, we reach a little bit higher and mm -hmm. we come back into the earthly world with a little more knowledge. And so when you find yourself seeking and wanting to know more, it is letting you know that you left a life before where you had knowledge. And so you're seeking a, a deeper explanation and a deeper understanding. And at some point, what spirit tells me, at some point we reach a life where um, we then will not come back to earth and that we will continue our journey on the other side. And our journey on the other side is one that is filled with love and learning and experiences and, um, and that there's this sense of, um, this sense of one, oneness because we are all 
part of the source. We are, uh, and science tells us this, that we're all made of the same material. Like we're all, uh, you know, plants. And, and when you think about, um, as, as a lot of people, spiritual people, um, spiritual geometry, how, you know, you see the spiral and how, um, when you look at nature, how everything opens up in that way. And so, it is, so I want, that's what spirit wants us to begin to understand that um, although we're having the earthly experience that we are a part of something that's bigger yes. and, um, and learning to um, love here and be compassionate and non-judgmental, like to understand that uh, in forgiveness, all of those things are what we are learning in this lifetime. Yes. And um, and so to when when people want to know more, it is just taking them on that path to help them to help them rise and to right. help them. So it, sometimes spirit loves to be playful too. So there is fun associated with it. Um, but it is also uh, the the understanding that you are growing, spiritually growing and um, and that's what we're all here to do. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think it's 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 wonderful how you connect with the not with the ancestral um, through ancestral healing and how you're able to connect with the ancestors of the individual. Now, you know, for people who may not understand the difference between an angel guide and an, uh, a guide and an angel, can you explain the differences between the two? Yes. Um, angels are spiritual beings. They re they are a real type of spiritual being, and they have a special connection um, with those of us on Earth. So, as we you know talk about having your guardian angel, um, and so when we talk about ancestors and our um, our family that is crossed, some of those who have crossed are our God. You know, they are part of our spiritual, close-in spiritual family. And they're the ones when I'm doing somebody's ancestry, I'm like my great-great-grandmother that came to me in an Irish brogue. She's one of my guides. You know, she's somebody that is really close to me. But as you raise you, there is a spirit guide for you who is there, um, you know, you may, this, it's what I try and help people do is to rise so that they connect, can connect with their spirit guide and guides are um, somebody that is truly helping you in this lifetime. And you, it is like, um, so I tell people when you get an idea, like family is there to love you, but your guide is there to help you make decisions here. Yes. And mm -hmm. it can be decisions about your health or decisions about your relationships or decisions about what's your next, what's the next thing that I should be doing. Um, it could be work, you know, should I stay here? Should I be doing something different? And yes. how a guide will come into you, um, it grows, it grows, you know, they, um, you can feel spirit chills from them, you can feel them in different ways. Um, but often uh, you will have an idea that will come to you. I just spoke to somebody yesterday. Um, he happens to be uh, just somebody that I, it, it, it's a um, business connection and we were talking, but he has a very spiritual side. So as he was hearing what I do, um, he was, you know, you could see how excited he was and how connected he was. And he talked about, um, we talked about podcasts. We were just talking about podcasts. And he says that, you know, he's so busy and he does all these things, but he said, as he's had quieter moments, that that's what's coming through to him is that he should be doing a podcast. And that's his spirit guide. Like I knew that that was his spirit guide who's yes. connecting with him. So um, spirit guides will drop in answers for you. It may be if you're struggling with your sister or you're struggling with a relationship in your life, that mm -hmm. they will tell you how to feel compassion for them or how to how that forgiveness will help you uh, deal with this difficulty that you're experiencing yes. and so so a guide is there angels are also there um 
to help you, but your guide is really that knowledge, maybe the, the real solid filter. Um, you know, all right. So my guide is going this saying back and forth, like, so it, but they're all, they're all spiritual beings, um, who you are connected to and who are deeply loving and deeply wanting you to understand. Um, and so when my guide shared with me, um, that the forgiveness that I, and I continue with it, but the forgiveness that I had for my sister, um, that, uh, you know, it, it opened up this world of um, truly understanding what they're here to help us with. Yes. You know, and so it's amazing. I, I love it. Do you think the easiest way for people to co connect with their spiritual guide would be maybe to start with the meditation? You had mentioned the meditation to me earlier in the conversation. Maybe you could tell us a little about that. So, um, so the, so I'm going to give you a lot. So some of the ways to connect to your guides, but some of the ways to grow is to be in a spiritual community, to work with somebody who understands it is also helpful. And often meditation comes up like what, well, how to meditate. And I explain to people that uh, so many people, um, get, uh, upset when the word meditation is even mentioned because they say I can't meditate I try to meditate I can't meditate and I don't want you to worry if meditation is difficult for you but sometimes meditating using music I was uh, talking with Stacy earlier about this meditation called the Moses code and it's a Moses code meditation the Moses code is a a book the Moses code is a there's a video about the Moses code and it is all about um abundance that is around us and you know a lot of us have heard about you know the law of abundance there are many spiritual laws that affect us um abundance being one of them but the Moses code is connected with that so if somebody understands that I go wait a minute I've heard of the Moses code but the Moses Code meditation is, it, it was, um, it came from the Hebrew word for, for God, or I am, as I, you know, I am that I am, uh, which is part of the Moses Code, is knowing that we are all connected to I am. Uh, and so it, I believe that it was turned into, that the, the letters, the Hebrew letters were turned into numbers, which were able to be turned into music somehow or through the computer. I don't have the explanation and not that it really matters, but the Moses code is the music that represents or is the, the word of I am, the Hebrew word of I am. And um, it is an amazingly beautiful meditation. And it puts you in this state that um, just to listen to it uh, just brings a, a very calming energy to your body. And it is okay. Uh, I know I talked about earlier how I use thinking of my ancestors all sitting around the table saying the rosary with me to keep me from saying a, you know, making the grocery list. Don't worry if that's what you're doing. Uh, listening to it is will uh, help your body listening to meditative music and maybe it is indigenous music uh, so maybe it's the sound of native flutes or it is you know different types of um, music that is something that will lower your um, bring you into a meditative state and the reason for it is meditation calms our bodies so that when those things that upset us to come around again, um, our bodies know how to handle it a little better. Yeah. And so that's what the, the meditation is all about. But learn, learning to connect is, uh, and that is one way to help us. But I just want to share that, that um, connecting with, with friends who understand or, or deepening, you know, there are books that can help you to deepen your spiritual uh, understanding. I can help you to look into your ancestors, or I can help you to open up and um, to help you, whatever it is, whatever spiritual thing that is coming for you. Sometimes it is indigenous. People are con connected with Native Americans or another indigenous 
um, group of people, or uh, maybe it is a certain religion, uh, Buddhism, or there's something that is coming to them, it, ancient civilizations, all of those things. I uh, um, have studied many different modalities and I can help people go out and kind of, feel, you know, when you're seeking, you want to do it. it um, people sometimes are afraid. And yes. so it's a way to go out and then come back if they hit something that says, it didn't make me feel comfortable and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, but it's good to work with somebody. Um, but it's also just let your heart guide you. Yes. Um, feel good, feels good. This is your, it's not your brain that leads you in your spiritual growth. It is your heart. And you right. will, as that grows, as that feeling grows, um, you begin to know when it's activated. And right. that helps you feel that that you're then connected. I love that. I love that. Now, if you had to, um, if you had to really like think about everything we talked about today, and there were some important factors you'd like to emphasize on, what are some of the things you really like to emphasize to the listeners today? Okay. Um, I would say uh, to just as I was saying just a minute ago, to trust your heart because that is your spirit center. Mm -hmm. um, to allow yourself to be drawn, to listen to different, uh, maybe uh, different spiritual things. Maybe there's something that you want to listen to, but to also use your heart center as your guide. Mm -hmm. There are, I was talking on another um, to somebody else recently, and um, there, it, a lot of us know the understanding of the um, the shiny object object syndrome, where we get drawn to something that is everybody's talking about it, or it's um, you know it, it is the thing, and I have to listen to this, and I have to follow this. Yes. And my advice to you is to to listen to anything you're drawn to. It may be something that's amazing, so I hesitate to say you know, be careful of the shiny objects, but I want you to use your inner guidance and know that even when you don't feel that you are connected, you do have guidance inside you and mm -hmm. to allow that to lead the way for yes. how you open up and what feels good to you. You know, when you hear, when you listen to a podcast or you see something that you are, feel spiritually connected to, you yes. feel and mm -hmm. I want you to listen to that person inside when that happens and to also listen when the other doesn't feel quite right. It's right. okay to not necessarily, necessarily believe what somebody else uh, is telling you mm -hmm. and, or only to believe part of it. It, mm -hmm. I have spent, I'm going to share, I spent a lot of time in um, Al-Anon because my husband uh, was, you know, I had um, alcohol addictions and I, um, Al-Anon was wonderful for it. And one of the things they say is take what you like and leave the rest. And mm -hmm. so use that as your guide uh, to yeah. take what you like and um, use the rest. And to, to, if you work with somebody, to work with somebody you feel that you can trust. Right. Uh, and that's the way to uh, open up and uh, understand how you're opening and I think also, you know, if you think about the the seven chakras, just your your third eye, which is your intuition. Yes. Everybody, if you talk to anybody and you mention the word intuition, oh yeah, yeah, you know, everybody talks about intuition, but that's a part of spirituality. But people yes. don't always recognize that. But you know, when there's something inside you that says, oh, don't make that left turn, you know, and you you know, if you listen to it, you know, good. If you sometimes don't listen to it you know, something could happen, you know, that was your intuition, which is part of the spiritual world, but it's, you know, and, and you that, is, that is, I'm so glad you brought that up because, um, I am really glad. So I, um, I am an intuitive ancestral healer. So the ancestors, when I am working, the ancestors come in and spirit guides will come in. It's not just the ancestors, but, um, and that is where that intuitive side um, is, we all have it and it is the beginning of your opening. So I am so glad that you brought that up. Somebody who is, um, who is a medium, what I do has mediumistic, um, I do have medium connections, but, yes. and, and intuition is heart is part of having those connections. 
So mediumship is a very specific type of bringing spirit in. Mm -hmm. Intuition is your, is the beginning. So when you feel like somebody tells you, go right, take that right. That is your, your beginnings of that guide or that, or that connection with spirit. And it is, um, it is what spirit wants us to all grow. And I'm so grateful you brought that up because that is one thing that I had forgotten to mention, uh, just not only because that is what has grown in me. And when I was at Ions, I was able, I was in the healing room and I was able to read, I think there were over 20 people that came in. Um, and it is that intuitive sense that spirit really opens us up to as we learn more and more. Because if you go to any skeptic and you say, well, do you have intuition? Do you sometimes, you know, feel a certain way? They'll say, yes, yes. You know, but then, you know, then you open it up a little broader and you say, well, that's part of your spirituality, you know? Right. So right. the skeptic right there and then has just admitted that they do have, you know, the ability they, they are, they have intuition. So like you said, that's the start of it. Well, and it's so funny because a lot of people that I've, I have done um, ancestral healing sessions with have come in and they said, well, I think this is, you know, I, I, I might have connected with, an, you know, an ancestor or they've connected with spirit and spirit comes like right in like, yes, like just confirming it so that they know they've already started on this journey. And I think that is, you know, my job as a, in, as ancestral healing and as opening, opening people up to spirit is is to open them up so they know they can do this themselves. It is right. not, you know, I mean, I spend a lot of time with some people, but it is opening because they want to know more and they want to know more and they want to open up more. But there is, it is also to help people that know that they, we are all open. I'm not, and I think you said it at the beginning, you know, we're not special, like spirit is around for all of us. And these things happen to all of us. It is just that we've been taught that um, not to listen to it and not to believe it. Right, exactly. Now, can you tell everybody some of the services that you provide? Because you have different services you provide. Can you go over with the listeners the different things that you do? Yes. So um, the name of my company, as I think I said is at the beginning, is Tell Me Our Story. So it's tellmeourstory.com. And um, the services I offer, I do ancestral healing sessions with people. So that's for people that want to come in and just, they have that question and they want to know, can I, am I connecting with my guide or am I connecting with my ancestor or, um, and we'll do a little bit of ancestral work with that. Um, or, and that's, I, I offer sessions that are an hour long, or I offer sessions that are 90 minutes, like an hour and a half, where maybe we'll try and bring more ancestors in. I yeah. also offer a larger package where I actually will do somebody's ancestry to help them like they they want to know about all of their ancestors. And I want people to know that the ancestors that are trying to reach them are the ones that they draw me to their different branches so that yeah. they're, you know, so that they they open up. And I look I I do it all the way up to a package where I'm helping people to not only go through their ancestry, but to take them to that opening and also to help them like the next steps in their life. Like what, what should they be doing? What are the next things um, in a, uh, in a coaching, like a life coaching kind of way? Cause I have a certification in that as well to help them to their next, um, their next steps. So it's in a lot of different ways, but the center of it is healing and the center of it is um, understanding that you are a spiritual being and that and to open up to that and help you where however you want to be on that journey that I can help you in all different ways. And you also can help people with um, that are, are getting ready to cross over too. that you yes. have the ability to do that also. Now I do I, I'm most of the work I do is online, um, but I do because and um, but I do I help families understand how to work with their loved ones. So yes. how to help them, how to walk. If their loved one wants to be with me, I can absolutely, um, but I can help them understand who's waiting for them and yes. who, you know, who's going to help them cross over and to help them in that way as well. So thank you, Stacy, for mentioning that. 
Oh, you're welcome. And how can people contact you if they want, if they're interested in your services, do they go to your website or if they have a question, like how, you know, what's the process? So I, I know that you will put underneath um, all of all, all of the ways that you can contact me because I'm on all different social media. If you go to the website, it's the easiest way um, to quickly get a, I have a 30 minute free session for if people just have more questions and want to, you know, want some answers. Um, but then I have ancestral healing sessions and, and, and the other packages that people could uh, go ahead and um, if they wanted to get set up doing that. But I'm also, I'm on Facebook at Tell Me Our Story on Facebook. I have um, a YouTube channel. Um, it's Bernadette Thompson, TMOS, Tell Me Our Story. And that uh, where I have videos that I, I try and put out, every, you know, every couple of days to help people on their journey and understand what I'm doing. I'm on Instagram. Um, I am on uh, on X. Um, I'm probably on X, not as much, but I'm on and I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. You know, so I'm on the usual social media, which the links will be there. But but the easiest way, if you want to, you know, come in and and reach me and um, reach out to me and and get a session with me, either a 30 minute free session to, you know, to ask more questions or um, is to go to the website. So it's tellmeourstory.com. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Bernadette. I, you've covered so many different things today and they, you know, it's, it's so important that people understand, you know, uh, uh, you know, the spiritual world and how it works and how they could really tap into. And it's not that difficult. You know, some people don't, you know, know where to begin. And it's people like you who could guide them and actually really, you know, share with them who's around them, and what's going on, and then, you know, guide them to show them how they could actually start to connect and open their themselves up to the spiritual world so they can and start doing these things on their own as well and have you know a wonderful experience and with your help too they can learn a lot about their ancestry and and also you know what you know who's around them and, and what they're thinking and what they're saying and the messages they want to cross over to to, to them as well so it's a life-changing experience i feel it is it is life-changing and um as you mentioned earlier getting becoming part of a community and I can help people do that as well, because it is that um, wanting to have people that you can share this with. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Bernadette. This has been wonderful. I really appreciate your time. And don't forget, guys, she has a podcast on our channel. So look for Bernadette Thompson. And, uh, you know, she is amazing. She has an amazing story and her episodes are amazing. So tap into her and you, you won't be uh, disappointed. So thank you so much, Bernadette, for, for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Stacey.